Hello YouTubers, today I'm going to talk to you about how to solder. We're going to be soldering my Schumacher laydown with an LRP speed controller system in there. And I'm going to use this very nice LRP soldering iron station. Um, it's actually an excellent soldering iron, but most soldering irons out there will do this job. If you're in a normal temperature room, you're not outside in the wind or anything like that, you should be able to do it but you do need a soldering iron that's got a reasonable amount of power at the same time you can't get away with some of the real budget ones uh, which would be doing finer gauges of wire um, this soldering iron can hold a lot of heat but you can get that with some 80 watt soldering irons with the big spade ends on it we're going to use this um, lead free solder here it's got some flux in it which will help uh, join the um, solder um, and the connectors together and everything and then you want a nice sharp knife. Um, the knife it will do many things. You'll be clearing out things, scratching off old dirty bits. But the main thing is getting rid of the insulation and um, removing about formula of insulation before you solder the motor on is a key thing. Um, when you use scissors or other things, you can damage the wires that are on there. So you can see here got the LRP uh, Flow X speed controller in there which needs to go to the X22 LRP motor. When I put the battery uh, wire terminals on I put some red heat shrink on there and then what I want to do is get the A, B and C terminals and put this heat shrink around them um, and then once I've done that to make it look really pro and really smart um, we're going to put a sticker on there to represent the brand so anyone glancing from a distance will clearly see what electronics are in your car. You could do this with any brand, they normally include a sticker sheet in there. Um, as you can see, I've also got a nice lighter which will shrink the heat shrink. And if you've got a nice heat gun, which is always a nicer way of doing it. And then I've got a little vise here. And the vise um, will basically hold on to your terminals when you're soldering them on. So some people like to put them on their battery when they're doing this. I don't know how safe that is. So I like to think that that's a nicer way of doing it. One thing I haven't mentioned on here is having some nice uh, snips um, for obviously when we're cutting things. So just some nice flush cut side cutters um, and they will be cutting your wires length when you connect into the motor. Um, there we go with my snips. Um, and also you need some pliers sometimes to hold the wire down. If you don't have asbestos fingers like myself and most dads in um, people's lives um, have asbestos fingers, they're always good for holding things down so a nice pair of well, I've got a set of blue pliers here which got cutters on the side um, and they always work out very nicely for these kind of things but I've got pretty tough fingertips I haven't got much feeling left in them and um, I can hold onto the wires pretty well as I'll be demonstrating in the video so what we do is we'll move on to actually getting on and doing some soldering you've got to organize your wires you want to get your positive and negative out of the way to start and you're going to pick out your first wire which is the A terminal which has got the blue um, heat shrink on the end of it as you see it down there and you just got to work out um, like don't overstretch your wire or anything give it a little bit of um, curve to it so it can relax a little bit so when everything's flexing around and moving it's got well, we can't say room to breathe but it can move um, and so all we're going to do is we're going to cut that to the length that we're happy with so get my cutters, there's my side cutters and we're going to just come up to the edge I'm going to give ourselves a little bit of room for when it's going to cut on right next to the terminal and give it a snip and there we go so now after that I'll be getting my knife and watching that you don't cut yourself being very, very careful it's a very light pressure like there's no pressure in here and just roll it around that insulation it's just very very soft stuff and that allows us to just pick it off with your thumb and once you've done that you want to twist the wires together make sure it's round first that's what I like to do so then it sits in the slot of the motor nicely but then I'm just going to twist all the wires together so once you get solder on them they kind of have a bit of structure so when you solder into any terminal and you push down with a soldering iron accidentally or anything like that yeah, it's there a structure to hold itself um, as a cylinder um, so now we get the soldering iron um, we're going to put a bit of flux on it um, and then we're going to solder the end of it so using all your fingers like a set of chopsticks um, we're going to this is how I do it anyway um, use my other fingers um, yeah you, you can work it all out 
and we're going to make sure that sold is actually wicked into it. When I say wicking, it's like flow down like water on a blanket or a piece of tissue. It's really gone into it. Um, just on the first kind of four mil that you've got up there. Um, make sure it's on both sides and that there's no like just anything looking dry or anything. You don't want a dry joint. It just needs to look shiny when you do this. And then I tin the area that I'm going to solder on to. So I've just tinned the A terminal. But before that, put your heat shrink on. I almost made the mistake of soldering it on without putting the heat shrink on. There we are on the other view. Just tuck it over there. And that drops down right there. Now I can get on with soldering it. Put the soldering iron on the big part first. So get the heat into the motor part bit and then lay the wire on and it won't find itself. You don't have to put any pressure on and just see how it looks. And that if it looks like there's not a lot of solder there, you can add a little bit more afterwards. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, the worst thing is when you haven't got a lot of solder on there. And make sure every time you add new solder, just make sure it's a fresh bit of solder. Clean the soldering iron off. A lot of people leave the old solder on there and basically your flux kind of burns away and then you've got this well, just complete trouble of um, trying to solder and it's because you're generating some form of dry joints where it's not doing a nice weld effectively um, you want all the solder to run into every crack and crevice um, in the area so again I'm going to take four to five and I'm going to take about four um, and just gently touching it and this my thumb I picked it off nice and easily make it round give it a twist and then all we do again is we get our solder we put a little bit on the iron first to connect and then we go straight onto the wire and I just flow it over so sometimes you end up with a bit of extra on the soldering iron but not on the wire and you carry it away on the soldering iron and put it on the side one point to mention is make sure you've got a fan blowing all the um, the flux away, not the flux away but the fumes away um, in a nice ventilated area, you don't want it um, going up your nose, it's not nice stuff. Um, obviously it looks like it's blown in my face, but it's actually blown in the camera's face. It's getting sucked right out of the way at the moment, I've got a nice little extractor. Um, there's various ones out there, and um, I don't think they're even that expensive, some of the, the beginner ones and everything. You just want to get it out from under your nose is the first step. If you're soldering outside, well that's normally pretty good. You're just doing it into the environment, which obviously isn't good for the environment I guess, but at least it's better than for that than your lungs. Um, but obviously, please don't shout at me, anyone. I'm sure the people watching this video aren't going to shout at me about um, obviously soldering going into the environment. So we're onto the C now, um, and again, we're cutting it. We're going to strip it. And we're going to solder on, and um, we can, oh, I'm pretty happy with all these joints. Um, we're going to run it round. I haven't cut my fingers yet. I'm just being very gentle with that blade. It looks like I'm about to stab myself in the hand, fingers with it. Um, and maybe I have caught myself from time to time in the past, but with experience, it's fine. Got plenty of solder here. That's going to go on there, getting a bit close to my thumb there. Don't want to burn it. Um, we're then just going to drop that on there. See, at the moment, I haven't cleaned my soldering right off. And I've got a little bit of old solder on there, so then it doesn't always go on that nicely. And see it's going a bit blobby there so i've cleaned my soldering iron off and i'm going to come back because i wasn't happy with that um and get rid of all the old stuff so we're going to drop it there i've touched the bottom bit i'm holding the wire and it should go straight on it's all very good the uh, lrp soldering iron is extremely good actually um it's the kind of iron that everyone in the pits wants to borrow when they do it so now i'm just going to use the lighter on it try not to burn the house down try not to burn anything um obviously if you're uh, not an adult, let's say you're under the age of 16, uh, you should probably um, do this with an adult um, or get a heat gun, it's the safest way, but again all of this stuff, soldering, should be done with an adult, supervising, making sure that you're not going to do anything bad, but now we're just going to drop our little stick on, we're going to go for, maybe not that one, we're going to go for the black and white one, we'll drop that one on there. Um, quite like the LRP stickers, they're quite short. Some of the other brands have got long stickers, so then when you put a small one on it's they're not very tall. Um, I think most logos should be uh, three letters long, so you're gonna have one. Uh, mine's got a few too many, but it's rectangular, the old Trish bits on there. So that's now stuck in place. I'm pretty happy with that, that's looking pretty smart. So if I ever take my body shell off to show anyone, 
they should be thinking, yeah, that looks, that looks all right, it's not bad. Um, I'm happy with it. So you can have a go now. Um, the other bit we need to do is cut some foam to squish the battery over to one side. The area where you have the terminals, people might disagree with me, but that's basically just two pieces of brass and air. Um, so I push that side over. I've cut this a little bit wonky, but it'll be all right. And we're just gonna stick that on the side pod there. Um, and that's just gonna hold the battery in position and stop it wobbling around. Keeps the terminals from touching the carbon fiber um, battery tray. And then I just stick it on and it might lay down feel more and more complete and uh, then we just need to do the terminals for the so you can see the bit sticking up at the back we just need to trim that off with a knife afterwards but I'll come back to that I've squished it with my thumb a few times but it's still going to be the same but now the next step is sticking the battery on um, we're not sticking the battery on but we're going to wire it up this is a 3900 milliamp battery it's what generally or the LRP team you're using. Um, it's what I like to use. Um, it's good enough for four wheel drive. Um, and it's got, it's lightweight and it can deliver the power. Um, so that's that's what we really need with batteries. Um, and it's low. Okay, so we just drop that in there. Actually, I have to put that in the wrong way around. Um, so I'd flip it around because the terminal is going to go this side because we've used the foam to push it all the way over. And now you can see how much it clears the, um, the carbon um, tray. So that's all good. So then we stick down the thumb screws just to hold it in place. There's no particular reason. But yeah, um, the nice thing about this tray is you, you nip it up all four, and then when you change it, you back off two on one side, and then you undo two completely, and it just slides out nice and easy. Um, and then you get to have the benefit of this X brace. This is the optional part on the car. When you run the brace between the gearbox and the the X carbon piece. Um, you actually get more uh, steering response from the motor because it's the force is being sent to the battery strap so that's quite nice actually I quite like that so you see now the battery can come out when you're soldering your terminals but where where your positive and negative are going to go um, that might cause you a problem if you don't do that because then you'll be plugging it in the wrong way around and reverse polarity isn't a fun thing in RC um, we've all experienced it and pop speed controllers and stuff from it um, generally, it's not that recoverable because of it. But we just sort of slide our uh, red heat shrink on, and then we'll work out a length that we want. So I'm just going to get some things out of the way. I don't even know why I screwed them on, to be honest. I was just enjoying them because they've got the little uh, nice looking thumb nuts. Yeah, one thing to consider is how far does the battery move back? How long will your wires ever need to be? Um, if you never run it back, then is there any point running them longer? Well, to be honest, if you didn't run them that long, it'll be the day that you cut them short, or when they run always forwards, that you then have to slide it back, and you're like, oh, I won't reach. And then you've got a length issue, which isn't something that people like in life. So now I'm gonna go a little bit longer with this one, because I want my, 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 my top of the, um, the terminal that's going to be soldered onto is a little bit larger but again I've twisted that wire again it's all about the twist um, get it nice and twisted and then you can put the solder in and it's going to have a lot of strength um, so I just come down now with the soldering iron um, well actually okay, I love my little uh, vice block here um, and that comes in um, and that will be holding my terminal very nicely I'm now going to solder the or put some solder on the wire, get it nice and tinned, um, and then on my terminal I'm going to do a little bit more. I just pull my wire out on my solder a little bit more. Um, obviously you can't see it, it's out of camera. Um, you just want enough sticking out that you can get to it. So just got some fresh flux on there, and it means that when I solder it, it's just going to take, it's going to be really, really good. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Just move the camera down, get a little bit closer. Um, I need to get a slightly different camera for doing this, but I think this is good enough. You all kind of get in the right idea and what you're meant to be doing. This video isn't for kind of pro solderers or people that haven't that, that, that have been doing this for ages anyway. Um, this video is aimed at people that do it and aren't sure, either don't have any confidence or have never done it before. You can see what I'm doing. Um, it's all about just transferring that heat across in a nice way and not hurting yourself. Then we get our lighter. We're going to shrink our red on. 
See, I'm hiding out of view so you can't see me doing it in this massive flame coming out the top of the uh, um, lighter. And look at that, it's shrunk down. But again, you can use a heater, it'll be fine. Um, or you can wait for a really hot day and put it out and... Nah, it still won't work on a really hot day. Well, I've never tried it, you never know, but... Right, now we're going to do our negative terminal. We don't have to put any heat drink on it, because it's already black wire. Should give it away. But we've kind of put it over the top of the battery, worked out roughly how long we're going to want it. And again, we're going to roll the wire back to the round shape. And then we're going to get our little knife. One last cut on this one. Watch the thumb. It's obviously it's sharp, but like I said, I'm being really careful. Use my thumbnail to pick it off. Give it a twist. And then get our little vice block back out. And we're going to get our terminal in there as well. Um, but I want to uh, have some bit of tinning. Tinned, it's shiny, it's going to be brilliant. But actually, no, it's a little bit dull there. You can see that it was a, had a bit of a dry joint going on there. So, we're just going to add a little bit more. I think it took the soldering iron away too much and just leave it with a slight bit of blobbage, I guess we could call it, just so it looks like it'll be nice to touch, it'll be smooth. Put our little terminal in here. This is an old um, vice from my, I think, my MCO uh, lathe. I've got, I've got a little mini lathe, um, it's for when you do vertical. Um, we do milling on the lathe, and uh, I've just kept it. I didn't have the attachment anymore, but it does a lovely job for this. So as we come in, the heat goes on to the bigger bit. The wire drops on. Heat transfers into the wire. The flux, all when everything starts bubbling, you can see it going. And you hold it there. You make sure it's really kind of joined up with the other side. A lot of people give up too quickly, and then they wonder why their terminals fall off when they go racing. And um, stuff like this make it really nice. Let's have a little look at that. So the next step, um, what I'd like to normally do is uh, give those connections a clean. You can use a bit of brake cleaner, um, get a bit of tissue, um, and you just rub on it because your flux is a little bit dirty. You're going to get it on your fingers when you work on it anyway, um, but I might do it in a minute. But we'll just put this on just to demonstrate it all together. Battery's in the uh, lipo forward position. And put our four little thumb screws on just to make sure it stays in nice and securely and uh, transfer that force well the force is transferred then from the motor um, into the brace and then you get a bit more feeling from the steering on and off power and then we plug it in and then look good the light comes on the speedo hurrah it works I didn't do anything backwards um, to be honest that wire could have been shorter if I wanted to have it that way but fine I can always shorten it off if I want you just can't lengthen them afterwards can't see any trouble with it, but I'm really happy with how that's gone. If I'm honest with you, um, I'll just pull that one out. So we'll just finish up by giving it a clean. So go away, have a go at soldering. Don't burn yourself. Don't breathe any fumes in. Do it safely. If you're too young, do it with a parent. They'll help you. Um, if not, find a friend that can already do it. But thanks for watching. I'll see you next time, and. We'll hopefully have a brilliant video for you to watch.